Uh, I think we should now um, segue into our uh, update into the world of uh, Rod Dreher. What do you say? Let's do it. Yeah, everybody. Rod Dreher is once again having unreality issues. (laughs) (laughs) Rod Dreher's unreality issues continue to manifest themselves in a series of missives sent from what are either uh, the worst people in the planet or imaginary fictions that he's created uh, to entertain himself um, living in his sort of Benedictine monastery that he calls suburban Louisiana. A lot of people ask us, like, who the fuck is Rod Dreher? Well, you remember at the end of the TV show St. Elsewhere where it turned out the entire drama of the hospital took place inside a snow globe being looked at by an autistic child? Imagine... If all the people who lived in that snow globe were like trans sex maniacs, and that's what <laughs> it is to be Rod Dreher. So, you'll remember a few episodes back, we did a reading where he passed along uh, an amazing story from a friend who, uh, along with her teenage son, was assaulted by a gang of transsexuals at a uh, Captain America Civil War uh, movie theater experience. Uh, Rod is at it again. Uh, this is not This is another story that he passes along. Um, this is at his blog. Uh, the title of the piece is, in quotations, Knowing is too hard. And uh, Rod, uh, this is in response to a, uh, a piece Rod wrote called, What? Trans? Here? <laughs> <laughs> Come on! <laughs> and Rod says... Uh, Uh, His email was so startling, I decided to give it its own separate post. I have edited it slightly to protect privacy. (laughs) Uh, His friend is just referred to as F-word, actually. (laughs) So again, this whole post is just this email from a reader. So I'm just going to, I'm going to read it now. So it says, this this is Rod's uh, reader emailing in. He says, I just got back from state in brackets again. Must we must protect the innocent here? <laughs> Couldn't possibly give away the state. <laughs> yeah, dude. If the if the fucking if the gay contras track this guy down, you know what? His house on fire. If they know the state, they can figure it out. <laughs> They're gonna backtrack the IP. <laughs> he says, uh, visiting my in laws and my wife's childhood friends, and we just had this exact same experience. My wife's friends do well. The husband is a union guy and makes more money than I do. Of course, he's in a corrupt union, probably just sitting on his ass all day. But he goes, um, I like him, but he's what progressives might consider to be mm, a problem. He has three kids, the oldest being a girl going into seventh grade. After a few beers, he says things like, look, I'm okay with anything, just as long as they ain't gay and no black guys. See what I mean? Damn progressives. (laughs) Judging yeah, what I love guy. about this, <laughs> what I love about this, he says, this is a guy who progressives might consider to be mm, problematic. Um, what, what, <laughs> what does everyone else supposed to consider this guy? The type of guy who will casually let drop that I'm okay with anything as long as they're not fags or black guys. Uh, truth teller. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, politically incorrect. So he goes, you know, oh, we're having a nice dinner. And he says, well, we were talking school stuff. And the mom very casually drops the news that there is a trans kid in the seventh grader school. My wife and the mom went to the school, went to school with the mother of the trans kid. I guess she was weird and goth and all the rest. <laughs> no, that's what did it. <laughs> they they said, you get a little goth in there and then boom. Trans. It's a slippery slope from black eyeliner to just the, the whole, all the way. What the hell's wrong with you? Look like a Puerto Rican whore. Make me sick. They agreed that if the trans thing had been a thing back then, the mom would have been the most likely person to declare. Fair or not, I don't know, but there it is. I don't understand what he's talking about. I, well, first of all, <laughs> I like the idea that in everyone in Rob Dreher's universe, they're like, yeah, just getting the friends together for drinks, dinner, laughs. Always the conversation seems to be like, who's the most likely trans infiltrator? <laughs> uh, who's, who's the most, like, trans people? Like, that actually is all that we talk about. But, like, I mean, yeah, they, no, it's just middle he America. Does, he treats it like it's it's either a viral contagion or, like, a pod person thing. He talks about how being worried about the trans people in bathroom, and I'm more and more convinced that he actually means that he's afraid they're going to pop out of the toilet like in Ghoulies. <laughs> <laughs> he goes uh, the, the reader goes on uh, at any rate my wife's friend sort of just mentioned that this girl came out as trans let's say her name was mary well my wife's friend sees her at a park this summer and says hi mary and the former mary very testily replied i am not mary i am mark now 
He's not he's not making up names here. He's like, uh, I'm not M word anymore. I'm M word, comma, masculine. <laughs> My wife's friend and her union husband sort of rolled their eyes and looked mystified, but left it as that. I was surprised. The no black guys and no gay dad seemed to be taking it in stride. So I said, So where is the kid showering? <laughs> <laughs> what I love about that is like he's at dinner with this, um, you know, a guy he knows to be a bigot and th- it seems to think that he'll be uh, simpatico on this issue, but he sort of shrugs it off. So he's like, let me needle him a little bit more and get the juicy reaction yeah. out of him. So I said, where is the kid going to shower? You know, the kid gets to shower wherever he, she says the school di- or the school district will lose their federal money. Shout out to Robbie Suave. Um, they looked at me and said, look, I had two heads. The mom said, I think that the school told the kid to shower in a faculty locker room and they were okay with that. I let her know that this will be fine as long as another kid doesn't push it further than that. Again, he's just inventing these nightmare scenarios to get outraged about that haven't happened. Still, they seem to be okay with it mostly because, you know, I guess, who's it hurting? Yeah, good question. Um, Until I said, well, yeah. Uh, the parents of that kid aren't nuts. You throw a biological girl into a boy's locker room and something bad will happen fast. <laughs> the problem is going to be when there's a biological boy who wants to shower with your kid. The dad looked like I had hit him with a pipe wrench. No, he said. That ain't happening. <laughs> it, it ain't happening because it's not happening. No, it's not. But <laughs> but, but uh, Rod, uh, Rod's friend says, I said, sure it is. The Obama administration's advisory says it is. I told him about the male to female trans kid in Alaska who meddled at the state competition. I'm telling you that this guy looked actively wounded. <laughs> like I, I was lying to him or something. So congrats to this guy for ruining a, a perfectly good uh, dinner party. I like Rod's dispatches because he's like, hey, Rod. Long time, long time listener, first time caller. Just want to tell you that uh, I also ruined an event with the same <laughs> trans fixation that you have. Uh, I am also now a weird, lonely person who collects emails about people who yell about trans people. This uh, is like this is like looking the ad- forward. <laughs> this is like the adult version of like the fucking friendless edgelord teenager who the parents can't take them anywhere because they'll bring up something dark and twisted and just be like, what? I'm yeah, interested like, in it. Why are you so offended? Yeah, like National Review Online is the new Rotten.com. <laughs> yeah, there's some really what? sick shit. There's some really <laughs> sick shit on here. <laughs> you you want to see something really ugly and disgusting? <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> but uh, okay, so he goes. Um, he said he couldn't believe it. I said, you haven't heard about this and that other thing? He hadn't heard of these things, but he just never thought there would be a penis in the girls' locker room. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in all my years thinking about the girls' locker room, as I do every day, I had never pictured a penis in there that did not belong to me. He says uh, he is still having trouble believing it. He, he fucking freaked these squares out, man. He fucking... <laughs> and it seems He's like, like this the is... crux of his complaint is that this asshole racist homophobic guy was not was also it? transphobic <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it's like, yeah, it's like oh, racism I... and homophobia were good fine it's like but why aren't you also freaking out about trans people what the fuck yeah this guy, he, he this was guy... like he was rubbing his hands together thinking of dinner like on the car ride on his wife over he's like oh man <laughs> we're gonna get some good transphobia tonight and then they get there and he just falls flat and he's like what fuck what ha- what happens in this article is it's the split between cruise voters and trump voters like mm. they're getting along yes. they're Ooh, like not, yeah yeah they're they're like like the union guys like uh, 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 hip hop style quarterbacks, bleh. and the cruise voter, like <laughs> cruise voter, not really a sports watcher, but he can tell you're being racist. So he's like, "Yeah, cool." Uh, uh, he's like, "Yeah, why doesn't J.R. Smith put a shirt on?" Yeah, God. Hey, hey, God, hey, hey, Russell Wilson, why don't you cool it with the raps? Uh, <laughs> but uh, like then, like the cruise voter is like, "All right, we've had a lot of fun tonight talking about knockout game, and like if a rapper tried to hold his gun sideways and Marine shot him." But like, <laughs> but let's get, folks, ser- let's get, let's get serious here. Let's, let's talk about a penis here. in a girl's locker room. Yeah, let's talk about seventh grade genitalia. <laughs> and the Trump voter is like, "What? No, what? Hell, hold on. Uh, no, I want to talk about how Mexicans are rapists." 
And the cruise the voter Trump is voters like, what? <laughs> the Trump voter is getting horny thinking about this. He's having the yeah. opposite reaction. Like, he's yeah. expecting revulsion, but he's like, oh, tell me more. What? You can get a boy in a girl's locker room now? Okay. Oh, man. Oh, I'm going to be going. I'm going to be signing up for Lifetime Fitness again. <laughs> and the cruise voter is like, oh, my God, I am going home to write Rod. So uh, he closes it out with like the typical um, sort of profound hysteria that th- these things eventually devolve into. And he says, this is not a religious family. I have never, ever known them go to church for any reason. Neither does anyone in their extended families. It's not like this is a huge secret. They honestly just don't know because knowing is too hard. And again, this is a guy who will police the family in terms of kids being gay. He will make his views on race known to his kids. It's, so he's a good guy in that respect. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, he's falling down. <laughs> he's just not willing to... He just doesn't want to know about this next level of degeneracy. It's not like he's not willing to go out on a limb and say unpopular things, many of which I disagree with, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure, <laughs> but sure. he just can't compute the trans stuff. Even though there is one at their school, he just sits there saying, no, I don't know what they do if it hits. I bet they just live with it. I doubt they can afford a religious high school. The cheapest one in their area is like $21,000 a year. The kids will think it's normal and the dad's objections will get filed away with his retrograde views on race. Rod uh, sums things up in italics. He says, they honestly just don't want to know because knowing is too hard. This is true. (laughs) This is true. This is profoundly true. If priests and pastors are not speaking clearly and directly to their congregations about this, they are failing them. These fuckers don't go to church. What does that even have to do with anything? (laughs) Yeah, no, yeah, like, yeah, no, this guy doesn't, he's too busy, like, watching, screaming the N-word at Sunday, at Sunday football to go to church. Like, what do you, what do you mean? Like, Everyone who goes to Rod, to like Rod Dreher's type of church, like they're already thinking about trans people all the time. This is like the it's dude. This is like the the last line in Boys in the Hood, like after Ricky dies and Ice Cube. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He's like, man, either pe- people don't know or they just don't care. Except Ice Cube, he just saw like somebody somebody go in a different bathroom than their biological assigned sex at birth, <laughs> and he goes, man, people don't know what goes on here. They and like Boys care. in the <laughs> Like Boys in the Hood, like right before the credits roll, there's like end titles where they tell you that uh, Rod's friend was um, beaten to death in a, in a women's target bathroom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Three months later, he, he was killed by a trans gang at the target bathroom. He was gonna do the he was gonna do the Facebook meme and beat up the trans person, but it turns out that due to his congenital it turns out he was failure, just too much of a pussy. Yeah. <laughs> there were too many of them. He was overwhelmed. It was like Iwo Jima. <laughs> Okay, so that was uh, I, Rod. Rod, <laughs> thank please you, Rod. Keep, thank you, Rod. Once Rod, again. bringing it again. <laughs> yeah, bringing the fire. Once again, that was great. <laughs> <laughs>